Merry Christmas, everybody! Uh, this year, my present to myself was a 360 degree camera. I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to incorporate that into a fish keeping channel, but this is what my trip to the local fish shop looks like. What down there, but And I can't go in because it's not essential and it's a lockdown Christmas. But yeah, it should be fun to incorporate a 360 degree camera into the fish keeping channel. Um, it does technically go underwater, so at some point I'm sure I will work up the courage to put it inside the tanks and we could probably do uh, like a VR experience inside a fish tank uh, with a full 360 degree view that you could put a headset on for. So lots of exciting things we can do with this camera and I'm just going to work my way up and get my head around it in the future. But for now, my Christmas present to you was a tour of the fish room with this camera so that I can kind of spin it around and show you everything nice and seamlessly. So first things first, the kind of background equipment. So this is my B-roll camera over here. I keep lights, I'm kind of keeping it low light at the moment for this video, but these lights kind of go down onto the project area down here. This is where most of my um, projects are made and videos are made of new tanks. Um, I'm kind of keeping it with a brick background now. I did occasionally have kind of black backgrounds where I use this sheet as a background, but I actually kind of think it looks quite nice and rustic with the bricks in the background. Um, the uh, cork board over here is made by my father-in-law and it looks really awesome. does mean that we're kind of locked into the uh, logo at the moment because obviously once it's on a cork board, it's there for good. Um, keep all of my uh, camera equipment over here, uh, extra lenses, my main camera, and down there is my gimbal and um, my tripod. And over here I kind of keep a semblance of order for the um, fish room with all of my potions and tools, things that you need to have to hand fairly quickly, like um, extra um, uh, paper roll and um, tea towel and that kind of thing. Oh yeah, I also have my own aquarium shed clipperboard. I say my own, I just writ aquarium shed on it. But the main reason I have that um, is because it has those colours on it and it allows me to colour grade nice and easily. Um, one other thing I think every fish room should have is um, over here a whiteboard. Now I use this to keep track of everything that I'm up to in the fish room. So when I did water changes, when I put root tabs in, etc, etc. But also a dosing chart. So uh, all of my tanks are going to get um, dosed with um, Flourish Advance, um, Flourish um, uh, Normal Flourish and Flourish Trace. Um, on a kind of three day cycle. So I move this uh, green thing around um, to tell me where I'm at. That was, so basically wherever that is, is what I did last. And I skip flourish every um, couple of days. So it goes flourish, trace, advance, skip. So nothing dosed, trace, advance, flourish. Um, so that's how I kind of keep track of what I'm doing with the dosing uh, for the plants. Um, yeah, so that's the kind of behind the scenes stuff. Oh yeah, and also I keep um, lots of things down here. So I have storage boxes full of um, lots of things like uh, filter media and craft supplies, glue, um, sort of spare parts, that kind of thing. Um, bicarb and citric acid, that white powder down there looks a bit suspect, but that's just bicarb and citric acid. And also there is a hospital tank down there, um, which I kind of always have running with a bubble filter. Uh, and then I can put a heater in when I need it. And it can either serve as a hospital tank or a spare tank when I'm um, completely redoing escape. Um, but also as a quarantine tank when I get new fish. So just handy to have an extra tank down there that is just a storage box, a really useful storage box. Works really, really well. So the main event is the fish tanks. I'm going to talk about these in a second, but first let's go upstairs and talk about the Embuna. <laughs> And here we are with the Malawis. Uh, so this is my feature tank in the dining room of the house. And I said when I did this that I wanted to create something that was quite clean, quite easy to maintain, didn't create too much fish mess. And I think I've achieved that. Now I've just given them a little bit of food and I'll give them a little bit more um, to uh, show you guys how much they love the Donnelly Cichlid veggie food. But yeah, just talk you through what I've got in here. So I have yellow labs and dog tooth cichlids. They're the first fish that I got for this tank. And then recently I got some rusty cichlids. 
So the idea with a, with a, with a Malawi um, tank like this is that you need to slightly overstock it, which is kind of what I've done. And you've got to bear in mind that those rusties are going to get a little bit bigger. But in general, the, uh, the kind of aggress aggression has kind of reduced a lot in there. Although I feel like they are kind of proving me wrong right now. But um, there you go. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, these dog tooth, this one here in particular is definitely the dominant person in the tank but never gives anyone too much of a hard time. There's a dominant uh, male lab as well. Haven't really worked out what the sexes are of the Rusties yet, but they are really quite small at the moment. And yeah, once they get a bit bigger, this will look a little bit more crowded, just like you need for this kind of tank. And um, fairly soon I will strip out the um, plants because they are looking knackered now that the Rusties have gone to town on them. Now I run this tank off of a Fluvel 306 down there. Kept that going for many years now. Um, it was second hand when I got it and I keep keeping it going by regularly maintaining the impeller, looking after the um, O-ring gasket so that there's no leakages and it's still working really, really well for me. So although I would ideally love to upgrade to um, something with a pre-filter so that it would make my life a little bit easier, um, there's nothing wrong with that 306. It's going really strong, so I will keep it until it breaks. Uh, so let's give these guys a bit of food. Like I said, I did just feed them, but that was, as you can probably guess, because I made a mistake in the previous video and I'm reshooting this. <laughs> uh, let's give them just a little bit more so that you can see them. Um, don't know if they'll like it as much now that they've already been fed. Yeah, they're still pretty, pretty interested. They love this food. So this is Danelli um, cichlid veggie food. And if you haven't already, there is a video of me eating it. So yeah, that is the Mbunas. They look really cool. Nice and simple. Nice feature tank. Oh, I grow some um, houseplants into the water as well up there. So they, those roots are just, just dangling into the bottom of the, uh, or top of the water rather. Um, and yeah, it just means that this is in the corner of the dining room and it's a nice kind of feature without it being too messy. Okay, let's go back downstairs to the main fish tanks. So back downstairs and we have all of the nano tanks. Uh, everyone seems to be coming out to play, which is good. So let's start with Bertie Better and his uh, fish tank that I've used um, egg crate to create a planted background on. I really like the way this has turned out and it's getting to the point now where uh, the egg crate is almost not visible. You can still see it in a few places, but it's getting there. Uh, won't be long now before it's completely um, grown out, which is really nice. Uh, Bertie can still fit through the gaps in the egg crate, so he tends to swim back there sometimes for a bit of a hideaway, but he's out now, which is good. And um, let's give him some food as well. Um, he's a pretty kind of responsive fish, so hopefully he comes out to play there he is. So that's Bertie in his uh, little 30 litre Danilo Nano Cube. I've got some almond leaves and leaf litter in this as well, trying to kind of keep it into a sort of a black water, although it's lightened up recently. I need to kind of put some more um, almond leaves in there and kind of get it back to a bit darker in the water colour because um did a water change recently so it's um, lightened everything up a, a bit. But yeah, really like that tank. I think it's growing out quite nicely. Nice and simple with the free rocks. I think it looks really, really good. Uh, then moving across and we have uh, the fishbowl. Now this is um, kind of recently been overhauled as you can see and you can probably just see that I'm kind of growing out some carpeting plants in there. Uh, there'll be a video coming up on that so I won't say very much more about that. And then we have the kind of pièce de résistance, I guess. Uh, my levity moss stone. I really like the look of this. It's got a kind of cool aesthetic, I think. Very different to your normal um, looks that you get with tanks. Um, and uh, yeah, nice and clean. But I have a plan for this that is quite exciting and there'll be a video coming up on it. And so you're getting a bit of a sneaky peek really that you can see in there, I have recently upgraded the filtration in there and it's see-through, which I think is quite cool. Um, but yeah, there'll be a whole build video and the reason for doing that will be revealed in a future video. So you're getting a bit of a sneaky peek there. But if you haven't already, there's a really cool video on um, how I built this moss stone. Um, I call it levitating. I don't know if it's levitating or floating. I don't really know how to describe it, but it's grown out a lot since that video. So when I did that um, video, it was 
kind of just this kind of browny Christmas moss that you can see in the in the background there, and it's grown out really nicely and got much much greener. And I also like the fact that recently I refilled this when I was doing a water change, and the sand just did this kind of circular hole thing in the middle there because of the way that I was pouring the water in. And I thought it kind of looked like the moss stone had emerged from the um, undergrowth. So I left it there because I thought it looked, kind of looked quite cool. But normally the sand um, sweeps up from the corner here all the way up to the left back corner. Um, but yeah, I quite like it. I think it's quite cool. So then we go down to the two Danilo Escapers tanks and um, we'll start with the Dragonstone. So this is a tank um, that I did maybe about three months ago now. And in there I stock um, Epistogramma Incas and Cardinal Tetras. Now the Incas are just constantly eluding me. I don't know whether or not they are two females, two males, or a male and a female. Um, and this particular breed of Epistogramma is very good at hiding its sex and kind of um, pretending to be opposite sex. So um, sometimes um, she, well, I'm calling her she right now because she looks like a girl right now, um, she can look really like a male and then vice versa and um, yeah at the moment there does seem to be some breeding behavior and the other one is looking very much like a male but you know who knows whether that will change because um, yeah certainly nothing has happened with these two so far um, I don't know where the other one is he's hiding away but yeah I like this tank I think it's got a kind of nice look to it I have had some algae problems recently which has meant there's been some um, I've had to kind of um, uh, cut back some of the uh, plants in the background so I'm going to kind of add a few more plants in the future to kind of give it a bit more green um, but the um, the dwarf hair grass in the foreground is really carpeted quite nicely and I think kind of looks pretty cool um, but yeah I don't know how much longer I'll keep this tank for but I do like it for now um, obviously running it off of a sponge filter, should have mentioned that about the other tanks as well, so uh, Bertie's tank is also running off of a sponge filter, this runs off a sponge filter, and then moving across to this tank, which is my latest creation, the Bogwood tank, and that is currently running off of an Aquel um, turbo filter, uh, but it has previously run this tank off of, a, of an air-driven um, sponge filter as well, and that was a principle when I first started this fishery, that I was going to run everything off of, um, off of an air pump. Um, currently deviating from that ruler slightly with two tanks at the moment but um yeah i have a big um air pump back there and if you can quite see it it's a eheim air 200 currently running bertie's tank a dragonstone tank and a hostel tank and actually the plan for the fishbowl is that that will also be air driven um so watch out for that kind um video coming out um probably a month or so uh, so yeah, I like this bogstone, uh, bogstone, bogwood tank. Um, it's got um, a pistogram mac mastery in it, just a breeding pair. Um, I have some um, sailfin tetras in the hospital tank right now, um, just quarantining before they go in here to join the epistogrammas, and it's just got a nice look to it, hasn't it? I think I've done pretty well with this it's probably my best scape so far um everything's growing out pretty nicely um i um, dose it with co2 which i use a um co2 generator with bicarb and citric acid to create and i've currently upgraded that so that i can use it on two tanks actually i've only just come down here and nothing's on so let's do that now so i've recently upgraded it so that um i have a um a unit on top that can split it three ways but it's great because it means I don't have to worry anymore about the bubble count because I've adjusted each of these individually and then I just turn the main system on uh, that is a canister that runs off of citric acid and bicarb soda works really really well uh, yeah and so I'm dosing that um, that goes in line into the filter line so the CO2 comes out of the filter outlet and then that one obviously I've got a sort of traditional diffuser um, yeah, and that is pretty much it. I think um, we'll leave it there. But um, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed seeing all of my tanks. Um, I kind of just wanted to leave you all really by saying, you know, 2020 has been a bloody strange year. Um, and if it weren't for kind of making videos and messing about with fish tanks and creating this basement, I mean, like this time last year, uh, this basement was a hellhole. Um, there was no no um, grey on the walls, this is all like a tanking slurry. Uh, there was certainly no tanks down here at that point. Um, it was pretty grim, pretty damp, definitely didn't have a wine rack down here. Um, and, uh, and oh yeah, which is also a good point, wine rack. Um, so yeah, 2020 has been a strange year 
and I thoroughly enjoyed making fish videos and uh, pottering with fish tanks and sharing that with all of you guys. And I'm really looking forward to continuing to do that in 2021. So stay safe, everyone. I hope you had a great Christmas yesterday because I'm going to put this out on Boxing Day. Um, I hope you have a great New Year's, whatever you can do, given that the whole world is uh, still in a right old mess right now. But you know, here's 2021. It's going to be a better year. I'm sure of that. It can't get much worse than 2020, that's for sure. And um, yeah, let's keep on pottering about with our fish tanks, keeping ourselves well, keeping ourselves busy, and onwards and upwards for the next year. And thanks so much for subscribing to this channel. It really, really means the world to me. I'm nearly at 1,000 subscribers. It'd be amazing if I get there soon. Um, and um, yeah, the plan for the channel is to keep growing. I have lots of projects on uh, my list. I have a huge document with uh, ideas galore, things ranging from tutorials to new scapes to little thought pieces and everything in between, some ridiculous and stupid ones and everything else as well. Yeah, lots of plans, lots of awesome things to do in the future. I hope you can enjoy coming on that journey with me and see what the future holds. But for now, I hope you enjoyed seeing the fish basement, seeing uh, all of the fish, getting a kind of overview of what I kind of have down here, how I run the basement, a little bit of a behind the scenes. And I shall see you next week when normal service will resume. Thanks for watching. Take care. Well, as ever, the first edit is always a steep learning curve, and all of that was pretty grainy. I think I've worked out how to fix it now, but I don't have time to reshoot it because it's Christmas and I need to wrap some presents. I'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching.